In this video, we are going to talk about the structure of protein. Protein is a polymer of amino acids. Polymer means it has same type of repeating units and that repeating unit is amino acid. This is why protein is also called the chain of amino acids. Amino acid means there is one amine group present that is NH2 group and another acidic group is present. In this case, the acidic group is CWOH. So one amino acid must contain one amine group and one CWOH group along with one hydrogen and one alkyl group. So this is the general structure of one amino acid with one NH2, one CWOH, one hydrogen and one R group that is alkyl group. But in solution, the amino acid shows another isomer and that isomer contains CWO- and NH3+. When the CWOH releases H plus ion and that H plus ion reacts with H2O that is water molecule and then further that H plus will be given to the NH2 and it will become NH3 plus and this ion is called Zwitter ion that is dipolar ion. In this case this is an ion because it has negative and positive charge on two functional groups but the amount of charge is equal. The CWO has 1 minus and NH3 has 1 plus. So the total net charge of the amino acid molecule is 0. So this kind of ion is called Zwitter ion. pH has a huge effect on the nature of the amino acid. So in a certain pH, the amino acid will behave like a Zwitter ion and that certain pH is called isoelectric pH or isoelectric point of that particular amino acid. In case of higher pH, the solution will contain more number of OH- ion. So when the CWOH releases the H plus ion, the H plus reacts with the OH- and makes one water molecule that is H2O. In high pH solution, enough H plus ion is not present for the NH2 functional group. So it cannot become NH3 plus. So the overall amino acid molecule remains negative because of the negative charge on CWO minus. So in high pH solution, that is basic solution, the amino acid behaves like an acid. That means it can release H plus ion. Similarly, in case of low pH solution, the amount of H plus ion is high. So the CWOH cannot release the H plus ion and NH2 group gets its H plus available in the solution and becomes NH3 plus. The overall amino acid in this case is positively charged because of the NH3 plus. So in the low pH solution that is the acidic solution the amino acid behaves like a base as it can receive H plus ion. Amino acid can only remain as sweated ion in the isoelectric point of that particular amino acid. As an example glycine. The isoelectric point of glycine is 6.082. So at the pH of 6, the glycine will have net charge 0, that is the sweater ion. There are overall 20 amino acids which build up the structures of our body. These amino acids can be made by altering the R group. These are the neutral amino acids, that means they are neutral at their isoelectric point or isoelectric pH. So in the R group, they do not have any charged functional group. These are glycine, alanine, valine, leucine, isoleucine, proline, etc. And there are some neutral amino acids, 
but having sulfur group in their R or alkyl group. Such examples are methionine and cysteine. Neutral amino acids with hydroxy group are serine and threonine. But there are also some acidic amino acids. In these amino acids, the R group contains one additional acidic group, that is one additional C double O minus. The examples are aspartate and glutamate. The basic amino acids, that is they are basic at their isoelectric point, they will contain additional NH3 plus in their R group. Such examples are lysine, arginine, histidine, asparagine and glutamine. All of these are basic amino acids. But there are another category of amino acids that are aromatic amino acids. They will have one benzene ring. One basic aromatic amino acid is tryptophan. And there are some aromatic amino acids which are neutral and these are the phenylalanine and tyrosine all of them have benzene rings so these were the 20 amino acids which makes protein in our body but how these amino acids attach to each other to become protein so in case of protein formation Two amino acids binds to each other by peptide bond and this peptide bond occurs between one CWH group and one NH2 group of two amino acids. While formation of protein one molecule of water is released and the peptide bond occurs between the C double bond O and the NH. This bond is called the peptide bond. By this bond, all the amino acids remain attached to each other to form a chain of amino acids. This process of amino acid chain formation can occur by two means. One can happen by ribosomal protein formation which happens in our body or it can also happen by non-ribosomal protein formation. When we eat some source of protein, we are eating the chains of amino acids in that particular food. Suppose we are eating egg. So egg has protein. Protein means it has the chain of amino acids. Suppose this egg contains amino acids of methionine, lysine, arginine and histidine. These amino acid chains are broken in our digestive system by mainly two enzymes. One is pepsin and the other is trypsin. These enzymes are responsible for breaking the peptide bonds of the proteins that we are eating. So after releasing the amino acids from the protein, these are transported through the blood into the cells of our body. Now these amino acids are inside our cells, available for usage. In each cell we have a nucleus which contains DNA with specific codes and these codes from the DNA gets transcribed into the RNA. And there are some ribosomes present in the cell. The ribosomes can be present in the endoplasmic reticulum or there can be ribosomes free in the cells. So the mRNA that is transcribed from the DNA will bind to one ribosome, either to the free ribosome or to a bounded ribosome to the ER. mRNA is containing some codes which has been transcribed from the DNA. And there are some tRNAs present in the cytoplasm of the cell. These tRNAs contain some anticodons. And each tRNA will hold a specific amino acid according to their anticodon. The ribosome attached to the mRNA will read the codes of the mRNA. 
and specific tRNA having the anticodon for that particular code will bind to the ribosome and release the particular amino acid. Again, another tRNA will come when the ribosome will read the next code of the mRNA and release its amino acid in the ribosome. There is an enzyme present in ribosome called peptidyl transferase. This enzyme causes the formation of peptide bond between the amino acids in the ribosome. Thus, a chain of amino acid is formed by the ribosome. This simple chain of amino acid is called the primary structure of protein. But this primary structure of protein is not functional. It has to go through some modifications. The first modification is called the secondary structure. The secondary structure can be of two types. One is alpha helix. In this helical structure, the amino acids are bonded to each other by hydrogen bond. Another type of secondary structure is beta pleated sheet. In this case, the structure looks like sheets. The hydrogen bond occurs between the oxygen of the C double bond O and the hydrogen of NH. And these bonds occur between the interchain amino acids. But still, the secondary structure of protein does not make a functional protein. So the functional protein must have tertiary structure. In case of tertiary structure, it has both alpha helix and beta pleated sheet structure inside it. But this structure is more complicated than the secondary structure. Another type of protein structure is quaternary structure. In this case, we have more than one tertiary structures bonded to each other and this kind of structure is called quaternary structure. This is how protein structures are made in our body using the amino acids. Some of the protein structures of our body are insoluble in water such as hair, nail. They are made up of keratin proteins. Our bones are also made up of protein called type 1 collagen protein. Our muscles has a major part which is made of protein and we can see two types of protein here. One is actin and the other is myosin protein. We also have major proteins in our skin which is the largest organ of our body. We have keratin protein in our epidermis and collagen and elastin in our dermis. All of these proteins are insoluble in water and they are called fibrous proteins. We also have some soluble proteins in our body such as hemoglobin which is found in RBC and which carries the oxygen in the blood. The antibodies which helps in the immunity are also soluble proteins. Enzymes that helps us to digest our food are also proteins and the hormone system that is the endocrine system the, all the hormones are also soluble proteins. Globular proteins are usually soluble proteins. To make all these proteins in our body we need amino acids but not all the amino acids are made in our body. There are some amino acids that are not made inside our body so we have to consume them through the food. So these amino acids are called essential amino acids. There are 9 essential amino acids. Those are valine, leucine, isoleucine. All of these are neutral amino acids. The sulfur containing neutral amino acid methionine is also essential amino acid. And in hydroxy group, the 309 is essential amino acid. And in neutral aromatic, phenylalanine is essential amino acid. In basic amino acids, we have three essential amino acids. One is lysine, other is histidine, and another one is the basic aromatic that is the tryptophan. All nine amino acids are essential amino acids. 
Amongst the 20 amino acids that are needed for our body, these 9 amino acids are essential because we cannot synthesize this in our body. The other amino acids can be synthesized in our body. So those amino acids are either semi-essential or non-essential amino acids. So there are total 9 essential amino acids. Valine, Isoleucine, Leucine, Methionine, Threonine, Phenylalanine, Lysine, Histidine and Tryptophan. Among them, the 6 amino acids are neutral amino acids and the 3 amino acids are basic amino acids. And in the neutral amino acids, valine, isoleucine and leucine are aliphatic. Methionine is sulfur grouped and threonine is having hydroxy group and phenylalanine is aromatic. And in the basics, tryptophan is aromatic amino acid. These 9 amino acids are essential amino acids that our body cannot synthesize. We have to eat it through our food. Protein food sources having all the essential amino acids in a certain level is called a complete protein food. The certain level is defined by WHO according to our body needs of each amino acids. Some examples of complete protein source are fish, egg, chicken, chickpeas, soybeans, etc. They have all the essential amino acids needed for our body and the content of amino acid is above the threshold level. So this is it for the protein structure video. I'll attach a link of the written form of this uh, in the description.